Nutrimix Feed Mill produces and manufactures poultry and livestock feeds for all classes of livestock. From their feed mill located at number 27 to 29 Subrati Road, Barapur. Their products are available at leading agro shops and they can also be contacted at their feed mill in Barapur at 654 0887. Nutrimix also processes and markets their Nutrina Farms brand at their processing plant located at 32 to 36 Harmony Hall Industrial Estate, Gasparillo. All their products are certified halal by the ASHA board and are sold at supermarkets or directly at the plant. They can be contacted at 658-5825. Nutrimix flour mills located at number 808-1 Pacific Avenue, Point Lisa's Industrial Estate, manufactures and markets the Nutrimix Premium Grade and Conchi Pride brand of flour and is globally certified. Their superior quality flour is ideal for the making of cakes, pastries, bread, roti and bakes. All of their products are available in different sizes at all supermarkets or at their flour mill in Point Lisas. They can be contacted at 636-2222. For more information on all locations and products, kindly visit their website www.nutrimixgroup.com. Shri Ganesha.
से बोलिए गजानंद स्वामी की जय उमापति महादेव की जय पवन सुत हनुमान की जय आज शक्ति नौ दुर्गा देवी माता की जय हर हर नम पार्वती पते हर हर महादेव आप लोग कराओ चाहे प्लीज टर्स यू ज्वाइन once again in the night's devotion visualizing the beautiful form of bhagwan ganesh as we prepare ourselves for maha shivratri this being the great night of bhagwan shiva we pray that his grace and blessing his protection forever be upon us all om vakra tunda maha kaya surya koti samaprabha विघ्नम कुरु मे देवा सर्वकारेशु सर्वदा ओम वीनाधरे विपुल मंगल दान शीले भक्तार्ती नाशिनी विरंचि हरीश वंदे कीर्ति प्रदे अखिल मनोरत दे महाहे विद्या प्रदा सरस्वती नौम ओम अखंड मंदलाकार व्याप्त ये नाचराचर तत्पम दर्शित ये तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव साईश्वराय नम ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवा नम शिवा नम शिवा नम शिवा भगवान शिव ऑन दिस मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस एंड वेरी ब्लेसड नाइट ऑफ हिज वी प्रे प्रभु मे योर ग्रेस एंड गाइडेंस एंड ब्लेसिंग फॉर एवर बी अपॉन अस ऑल एस वी थैंक यू फॉर योर प्रेजेंस योर ग्रेस एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली दिस ऑपरचुनिटी ओम जय शिव स्वामी हर 
पति शंकर भगवान की जय उमापति महादेव की जय हर हर नम पार्वती पते हर हर महादेव आप लोग आसन लीजिए प्लीज बी सीटेड this with great love and blessing we take this opportunity on behalf of the devotees of this the vishnu mandir here in number 5 in barakpur to say a very special welcome to each and every one of you who have come to join with us in tonight's devotion tonight being the great night of bhagwan shiva called as maha shivratri maha meaning great shiva meaning the one who is most auspicious ratri meaning night so the night of the most auspicious one is called as maha shivratri it is a very auspicious occasion where millions of devotees across the world would have fasted today and have done devotion they would have done jap chanting om namah shivaya thousands and thousands of times not because it is a custom not because it's a tradition not because everybody else is doing it but because it is for our own spiritual development it is for our own spiritual awakening it is for our own spiritual growth and you know friends every day we partake of food three times a day and nobody tells us when to eat does anybody tell you when to eat unless you go by somebody else's home they may tell you hey you know what you can have something with us have some dinner or have some breakfast or lunch or whatever or you must eat something before you leave you know my friends when it comes to our spiritual development and when it comes to spiritual unfoldment we must chant the lord's name because when we are hungry we look for food isn't it anybody hungry not yet a little bit later of course dinner is provided but you know when we are hungry we know where to find food and if we don't find food we become very you know upset and we feel we might get headaches and stuff and the stomach is aching and we try to find food or something to eat brothers and sisters just like the body crave for food the soul craves for the name of the lord the soul craves for meditation on to the lord the soul craves you know that connection to the lord and we should not take it for granted we should not take our spiritual life for granted my friends and so tonight being one of these most auspicious night we indeed all bless to be in this beautiful ashram to celebrate this very auspicious occasion of maha shivratri where we now feed the soul we feed the mind the spiritual food that the spiritual hunger will be satiated special thanks goes out to pandit vishal pandit anil and of course to pandit harish and my son abhishek here tonight and we say special thanks to them for conducting puja and doing devotion with all the devotees and shrotas so tonight my friends we are not only here at the mandir but we have all entered into the hearts and the homes of thousands of devotees and millions of devotees worldwide via sankit television for those who are tuned in in other parts of the world may the blessing of bhagwan shiva be with you and of course your families your loved ones now and always special thanks to omkar and shili didi the two camera personnel and technical crew of sankit television to the corporate sponsors on sanke television we would like to express our sincere gratitude and bhagwan shiva blessings to the management and staff of the various companies who keeps the light of sanatan dharma burning in the heart and in the home of thousands of devotees at this time we want to invite you now to close your eyes sit back in a relaxed posture and mentally you are standing before the lingam of bhagwan shiva and you are making your offering mentally for now after which we will do it physically but mentally you are seeing bhagwan shiva we are seeing parvati devi bhagwan ganesh kartikeya shiva parivar the family of bhagwan shiva the beautiful shiva lingam on mount kailash the mountain is covered with snow freezing cold yet not affected by the coldness of the cold not affected by the heat of the fire 
not affected by the peers of opposites, happiness or sorrow, victory and defeat. We try to keep the mind balanced and calm. Tonight we are not affected by anger or jealousy. We are not affected by hate or lust. We are not affected by the low tendencies, the happy moments or even the sad moments. We are not affected by the peers of opposites, the night or the day. Tonight we are not going to feel sleepy. Tonight we are going to be awake for our Lord Bhagwan Shiva. Tonight is his night. He has given us so much. He has given us his blessing, his grace, his mercy, his protection in so many different ways. He is never tired or he is never sleepy looking after us. Like a mother or a father will make the sacrifice to look after their children. All of our lives, Bhagwan has been looking after us. And tonight it is our chance to say thanks to him. This is basically what we are doing, saying thank you Lord. And we are making a sacrifice by being awake for him, by worshipping him with our love and devotion. That if ever he feels uncomfortable by the poison that was a churned out of the ocean and the poison that came out of the heart of his devotees and the negativities that comes out of us if it burns him or it affects him or it hurts him in any way tonight we make our offerings to bring some degree of comfort to him O Mahadev, O Kailas Pati Shankar tonight as we bow to you we thank you for love we thank you for your protection we thank you for your grace we thank you for being with us every second of our lives even though our minds sometimes tend to make so many excuses when we have to worship you when we have to express our love to you when we have to say thank you the mind wants to run away sometimes we take life and the things that comes to us for granted Prabhu Thank you for allowing us to come in this mandir tonight. The mandir of our hearts, the mandir of our mind, the mandir of our lives. To express our gratitude to you. Hey Mahadev, hey Kailas Pati Shankar. Every heart here tonight is saying thank you. Every heart viewing on Sankh television is saying thank you. There are many devotees who wanted to be here or maybe go to some mandir up, uh, across the country. But because of fear of the, the way the society is, they decided to stay at home. And for this, we want to thank you for allowing Sankhya Television to enter the homes and the hearts of thousands of devotees. There are those who are tuning via Facebook. We want to ask you to extend your blessing to those devotees who are tuning in other parts of the world. Prabhu, thank you for social media. Thank you for these means through which devotees can connect to us in the mandir and in the mandir of our hearts. Hey Mahadev, hey Kailas Pati Shankar, we are going to mentally offer Ganga Jal to you. Please accept as we are holding this lota filled with Ganga Jal, taken direct from the Ganga Devi. Please accept our humble offering. Om Namah Shiva. from the Lota of our hearts. And when we chant Om Namah Shivaya, every time we chant Om Namah Shivaya, let the drops of Ganga Jal be offered on the Shiva Lingam. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya.
fruits, the prasadam to Bhagwan Shiva. The fruits and the prasad represent our love. It represents our bhakti. Please, the Mahadev. There is nothing in this world, Lord, that happens without your will. Everything happens by your grace and by your blessing. Please accept our humble offering. Go around the lingam of Bhagwan Shiva. Om Tat Purushaya Vidmahi Mahadevaya Dhimahi Tanno Rudra Prachodaya Om Tat Purushaya Vidmahi Mahadevaya Dhimahi Tanno Rudra Prachodayat Om Tat Purushaya Vidmahi Mahadevaya Dhimahi Tanno Rudra Prachodayat Shaya Vidmahi Mahadevaya Dhimahi Tanno Rudra Prachodayat Om Tat Purushaya Vidmahi Mahadevaya Dhimahi Tanno Rudra Prachodayat
last night we saw from our discourse where within our own bodies there are so many different forms of divinity there are so many different forms of energy there are so many different forms of God present in our lives starting with our bodies and as we continue tonight's discourse we bow to every one of you we seek your blessing I would like to welcome my beloved father Shri Pandadev Kiprasad Sharmaji for gracing us with his presence tonight and bringing blessing to us all my friends we saw last night the deutas that lives in the ears or resides in the ears the nose the eyes the tongue and of course the skin we saw that in our in our at our legs in our legs and of course the pro procreation organ the excretion organ every part of our body has some form of divinity and last night we mentioned this simply to show and to indicate to each and every one of us that our body is a holy entity our body is a mandir the body itself should not be disrespected the body itself should not be my dear friends what you call be treated in a negative way and so if we respect our bodies they're very important you know if we respect our bodies my friends then we will treat it like a mandir we will treat it like a mandir you know there was a beautiful bhajan that says man hi devata man hi ishwar man se varan ko man hi devata the mind itself is devata man hi devata man hi ishwar the mind is ishwar but we also saw from the rudra upanishad last night that every part of our body there is some form of divinity so we are supposed to worship the body we are supposed to cherish the body because the body is the means for us to realize our true potential and to for us to achieve our goals in life materially and spiritually so therefore my dear brothers and sisters you know we're talking about respect the body jai bhagwan when you go to all the different kind of um, fat and so on and you see how they respect the body and many of our young girls girls of our nation have lost that respect for their bodies and many of the young boys and because they have lost you know friends you know i'm not bashing anyone i'm not bashing the festival that we celebrate as a as a part of our culture in Trinidad and Tobago but what we're talking about the manner in which it is celebrated and the way people carry about themselves during the festival of carnival etc and the way people dress spending plenty money and getting less cloth isn't it is it more than trend now you know spend plenty money and get less cloth and when you're getting a whole sari for a few hundred dollars you want to buy it but when you're getting something very skimpy for plenty money oh yeah that looking really nice now again like I said I'm not bashing anyone it's the reality of uh, what we see on our streets especially at times like these but for us as young as us for us as Hindus we, we respect and we worship and we honor our bodies and when we don't do that people feel in life families fall apart families are broken and if you listen to some of your friends and some of the people that you meet on a daily basis and you listen to some of the things that happens in people's lives in families and if you reflect a little bit where it all started it all starts from when we lose respect for ourselves and we are going down a certain path my friends things does not be 
is there a saying like honky dory is there a saying like that things does not only be it will not be rather honky dory that's the way I pronounce it correct it doesn't be happy when we go down the wrong path it does not turn out to be good when we go down the wrong path it does not turn out to be my friends uh, uh, what you call our lives filled with joy when we go down the wrong path and for our young boys and girls remember if you don't respect you nobody respects you so the mandir starts in the body the bhajan tells us manhi devata manhi ishwar the mind is ishwar in the body bhagwan krishna says in the gita you read the gita you will see where he said indriyanam manas chasmi indriyanam means among all the senses of the body i am the mind he didn't say i am in the mind you know he said i am the mind bhagwan shiva my friends sorry bhagwan krishna says i am the mind remember this bhajan man me shiva hai man me me means in that bhagwan shiva is in the mind but you know what the next line says the line next line says well the first line says man me shiva hai next line shiva me hai man dar diya khud ko tujhko shiva hai that shiva is in the mind but again the same line says shiva is not in the mind shiva is the mind are you all paying attention are we all listening are we all reflecting on what we are hearing so if bhagwan shiva is in the mind the mind is in the body remember last time we talk about the antakaran and who is the god of the antakaran you all remember you see anybody remember given you all exam last night we said that hiranyagarbha one form of the lord is hiranyagarbha who is what you call the god of the antakaran the four equipment the inner equipment manchit buddhi and ahankar my friends and here in the bhajans it is saying man me shiva hai that shiva is in the mind and the next line says shiva is not in the mind shiva is the mind bhagwan krishna says in the gita that i am the mind i am not in the mind i am the mind friends when we disrespect our bodies we are disrespecting the mandir of the lord when we disrespect our mind by entertaining negative thoughts it comes like you go inside of a temple and you carry dirty things anybody brought any dirty things in the temple here today anybody came in this temple tonight without taking a shower i hope not <laughs> anybody brought anything that is not clean how many of you fasted today don't tell just think how many of you prepared yourself with clean thoughts and clean words and clean action today it's because the night is shivaratri and i want to go to the temple clean you see so we prepare ourselves in this way and we came to the mandir tonight and we celebrated we are celebrating the maha shivaratri the night of bhagwan shiva so bhagwan shiva my friends is in the mind and this is what we saw last night that when we inculcate these qualities in our lives this is the real puja this is the real aarti this is the real offering that we are giving to bhagwan shiva and this is why this bhajan says mere man veera ki taare har pal shiv ka naam pukare maine shiv se laga
last night when we talked about satyam ahimsa tapas uh, karuna prem indriya nigraha santosham kshama gyan all these are what you call offerings to bhagwan shiva all these are offerings to bhagwan shiva Satya means Let me ask you all Satya means truth very good that's the truth Satya Ahimsa means Come on everybody knows Ahimsa Ahimsa means very good Ahimsa means non violence don't hurt anyone don't hurt anybody whether it's in thoughts in words in action don't hurt jai bhagwan i wish in our country this can be practiced because every day we see on the news so many people hurting other people and just want to rob and steal and loot and kill and and all these things my friends my dear brothers and sisters ahimsa means non violence don't hurt anyone So Baba when I get angry what to do I would say it in local language calm yourself when you get angry it's a natural natural process in life it's a natural thing in life to get angry when certain things happen in love and in the life but it's not natural to you know become the victim of anger 
It's natural to become, to get angry, but it's not natural to become the victim of anger. And what is the meaning of becoming victim of anger, my friends? Becoming the victim of anger means where the anger now is not only being expressed through our words or maybe action, but it is now burning us on the inside. Like it is described like a match green, you know? You have a box of match and you strike one grain of the match and you say you're going to burn some garbage or something and you strike the grain of match to, to burn the garbage. But ask yourself the question, where is the fire burning first? The first place that get burn, gets burnt is the grain of match. So anger is like that. When, you, when we become angry, the first place we burn is ourselves. And then we spread the fire of anger around to everybody else. And then we wonder, well, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Yes, you got angry. And the anger manifested through the, the words and the action of yours. And so my friends, it is said here, Ahimsa, meaning don't hurt anyone. Do not hurt anyone through your through thoughts, through words, through action. Today, how many wives are hurt? How many wives are being hurt? If I, my friends, if I go to my phone and you will see the amount of messages where so many people confide and they tell, they know what's happening in their life and how they are being abused and blamed for no reason and accused for no reason and not just uh, emotional, uh, what you call emotional abuse, psychological abuse and sometimes when that doesn't work, physical abuse. You know how many wives are being hurt in this way? You know how many husbands are being hurt in this way? You know how many children are being hurt? And yet we come and we want to offer 108 flowers to Bhagwan Shiva. But we are abusing the children and we are abusing the family. Friends, the greatest worship that we can offer to Bhagwan Shiva tonight is to respect and love our family, our children, the love the wife. She may not be perfect. She may not be the best person in the whole world, but she's a human being. In her heart, she has love. And when we learn how to deal and treat the situation, you know, we can make an imperfect person perfect. And that is the goal. The husband may not be perfect. He may have his ways, he may have his moods, he may have his habits. But according to how we deal with it, that also is very important. In fact, that is the ultimate, most important thing. How we deal with situations. That is ahimsa. You see, when Gandhiji was fighting for independence of India, and we always refer to this, you know, he fought a war on non-violence. Do you know he conquered the British on non-violence? When his people were being hurt physically and they, they were being abused physically, he said, do not revolt with anger and do not revolt with violence. Take what you get, but stand up strong. And that's what they did. And the British eventually, or what you call, gave up because they could not fight because they had nobody to fight with. Friends, even in the home, if, they, if someone is quarreling and they have no one to quarrel with, you think there will be a fight in the home? My dear brothers and sisters, what happens to the mind? What happens to the mind when we, when a person, I should not say we, in this case, when a person is looking at the innocence and the purity of a child and take advantage of this? So you see, when a person practices satya and a person practices ahimsa, that is offerings to Bhagwan Shiva. It's a natural thing. You don't have to go and pick a bay leaf or a flowers, but just by being truthful and honest and ahimsa, non-violence, and being, you know, pure in heart, that is the offering to Bhagwan Shiva. So when we make the offerings of all these ingredients on the lingam of Bhagwan Shiva, we take it from there and we put it in our practical lives. And this is what we want everyone to understand. Tapasya. Tapasya meaning sacrifice. Which father did not sacrifice or is not sacrificing for his children? 
Which father here is not sacrificing? Which mother here is not sacrificing for their children? Which wife is not sacrificing for the husband or husband for the family or the wife? Which one of us is not sacrificing at work? Everyone doing tapasya in our own way, that sacrifice is worship to Bhagwan Shiva on a day like today. That sacrifice is worship to Hanuman Swami and Hanuman Jayanti and always. That sacrifice is called tapasya. So these are the internalized ingredients that we are offering or the samagri that we are offering to Bhagwan. Daya, daya means mercy, compassion. When we internalize the, these ingredients and we live with, my friends, these qualities, dear brothers and sisters, then our life becomes that mandir in which the Lord is dwelling and it, every action of ours become an offering to Bhagwan. Love. You see, love, my friends, is not just words to say, I love you. Love is not something where we just say, no, I love you. Love is something that must come and be expressed. Now, when two young people meet and they say for the first time, you know, I love you. Or the girl asks the boy, do you really love me? Or the boy asks the girl, do you love me? And he can say, yeah, I love you. That, just, that is just the beginning, you know. Now from there, the, word, the love now has to be expressed in every action. That's the beginning. The love has to be expressed in every action. The love has to be expressed in satya, in truth. It has to be expressed in ahimsa, non-violence. It has to be expressed in sacrifice. Because when you love someone, you sacrifice for them. When you truly love someone, you don't blame them. And if they become the victim of something, you hold their hands and you hold their heart and you lift them out of it, not push them down in the gutter. That is love. Love is, you think when you're going to get married or when you get married, the person you're going to get married to is the perfect person? You think the person that you're going to get married to is 100% perfect and she or he will not make mistakes? But the love is tested when that person makes a mistake. How you react towards the situation. Whether you hold her hand or, her, or his hand and you lift them up. Or you hold your hand and look at them and push them down. That is love. My friends. Bhagwan Shiva. When the time came for him. To be married to Sati Devi. She did many, many years of tapasya, many years of sacrifice because of her intense love. It was Purva Janma Sanskar that initiated into the mind of this Devi that she wanted to get married to Bhagwan Shiva. When Bhagwan Shiva is performing his Leela, the Shakti must be with him. And friends, when Sati Devi was performing the tapasya and the sacrifice, the Saptari she came and the Saptari she told Bhagwan, sorry, the Saptari she told Sati Devi, oh, the negatives and all the bad things about Bhagwan Shiva. You know what they told? The Saptarishis came and said to Sati Devi, Hey Devi, Pranam, you know, mentally they prostrated because they knew that she was not just an ordinary lady. She was the Shakti, the mother of the universe. So they prostrated to her, they bowed, and then now they started acting ordinary, thinking or treating her like an ordinary person. And they said, uh, Sati, what are you doing? She said, I'm doing tapasya. Why are you doing tapasya? Because I want to get married. Oh, you want to get married? But you don't have to do tapasya to get married. Yes, I have to do tapasya to get married to the person I love. And who do you love? I love Bhagwan Shiva. So do you think Bhagwan Shiva will really marry you? She said, of course he will marry me. Bhagwan Shiva will definitely marry me. He is the Lord and the Lord of my heart. And I gave, my, I gave myself to him. And through the sacrifice, he will accept me as his eternal companion. And the Saptarishis looked at her and they said, yeah, right. That's not possible. Bhagwan Shiva will not do that. And they said, Sati, do you want to marry? Listen to what they said, right? Do you want to marry a person who lives on the crematorium ground? The crem crematorium ground where 
the bodies, the dead bodies are being burnt. Do you want to marry to that person who takes up the ashes of the dead body and put it on his body? That is the person Dullaha you want to get married to? Hmm? Girls, if your fiancé or husband decided to go down by the creek and then you see them take up some ashes and start to rub their skin, what are you going to do? Oh God, Baba, I hope you I don't even want to touch him. <laughs> Isn't it? You know, one day we were passing from Yagya, we were doing Yagya down in Mondizi, and we were passing from by the creek around 10 30, quarter to 11 in the night. I know I see somebody there. Jay Bhagwan. <laughs> somebody was there when the body was being cremated, and that person was doing something. I, chanted, I started chanting Om Namah Shivai one time. Om Namah Shivai, Jai Bhagwan. And people go there and they do things, you know. They try to do things to other people and stuff. And... But don't worry about that. That could never affect anybody. So Lord Shiva lives there. He dwells there. And when the body is cremated, he takes the ashes that the body has been cremated. He takes the ashes from that body and he puts it on his body. Do you want to marry to that person, Sati Devi was told, was asked rather? Do you want to marry that God who has serpents around his neck? Do you want to marry to that person who, whose throat has been affected by poison? Hmm? You see, my friends, the strategy that the Saptarishis were using was to see and talk about all the bad things about Bhagwan Shiva, inverted commas. They are talking about the so-called bad things of Bhagwan Shiva. But the reality of it is, they were testing her to see how genuine her love was. And you know, sometimes when we meet people or we decide to spend our lives with someone, and you know, my friends, our love will be tested at times. And it is tested in a drastic way, in a most difficult way to see whether we are genuine or we are going to give up. Young people, devotees of God, when your love is tested, that is when sacrifices are being made. That is when we are supposed to now get ourselves together and in the interest of our love, we focus and move on. So when we have that type of love, then our devotion to Bhagwan is an offering. Then our every uh, moment is an offering to Bhagwan Shiva. So love is tested. Love is not just, oh, I love you. Oh, we'll spend our life together. And we'll go on a nice um, trip in some part of the world, to Paris and to India and England. And and we have a wonderful time. Yes, that's love. Hare Baba, that's not love. That means you're rich and you have some money and you want to spend it. <laughs> that's not love. Oh, I'll buy you a nice car. Valentine's, I'll give you... Here, here are the keys to a nice car. I love you, baby. <laughs> hmm? You see, all those things are wonderful, but love manifests itself in our actions, friends. So here in the Rudra Upanishad, it is saying that these are some of the things that are offered. It is our internalized offering. And this is what I want you to remember. Internalized offering. Everybody asking, Baba, what to offer tonight to Bhagwan Shiva? Okay, sure, cane juice, milk, dahi, ghee, bay leaves, flowers, incense, chandan, sindur, hardi, arti, and... Am I missing anything? Akshatam and rice and all those things. And you do Bhagwan Shiva puja like that. That is, yes, the external offering, but the internalized one. Himsa, Satya, Tapasya, Sacrifice, Compassion, Mercy, Karuna, Prema. Indriya 
Anugraha we mentioned last night. Brothers and sisters, equal vision, samadrishti. Samadrishti meaning that we have an equal vision and a balanced mind. Equal vision and a balanced mind. Can anybody explain to me what is the meaning of equal vision? Tell me in one sentence, anybody? Equal vision. See by Chris smiling because you know, this is a very powerful word, a very powerful thing. Equal vision. Hmm? Shrutas, Gayatriji, what is the meaning of equal vision? Equal vision means, simple, see everyone alike. See everyone alike. And we all talk about this sometimes, you know. You look at somebody, you cut them, you see blood, I have blood, I have skin, I have bones, I have um, tissues, I have a heart, I have, a kid, I have kidneys. I have a stomach, I have, the, I have the body, we all equal. When it comes to the body, we all equal, by God's grace. Friends, equal vision means looking at everyone alike. But from a philosophical point of view, we rise beyond the body and we see everyone alike. Seeing everyone, meaning seeing God in everyone. Seeing everyone alike, meaning with humility. Brothers and sisters, you know what happens? We see everyone. We see divinity in everyone. That is the meaning of equal vision. Equal vision meaning seeing divinity in everyone. So when we are able to see everyone as equal and not discriminate and say you know he high and she low and i is this and i is that i i i see this word i it is called aham in sanskrit aham means i iness and uh, mamata mamata means minus I ness and my ness. I am this, I am that, I am the next, I am better than you, I am more handsome than you, I am more beautiful than you. My I I I, I live in a nice place, you live in a nice place. <laughs> I I I and right after that is cry, cry, cry. Stop using the word I. giving you all this homework tonight. Stop using the word I. So Baba, so what we will use? Use we. I alone am not sitting here. Who are you seeing? Me and who? Huh? No, here. Me alone? So I alone sitting here? Ina. That just the island is sitting here. <laughs> hmm? You see, you are seeing that I alone am sitting here, but I alone am not here. There is someone here with me, and there is someone who is speaking here to you through me, but you are not seeing him. You have to go beyond the body. You have to go beyond the physical perception and rise beyond to that divine vision. And that, my friends, we hardly practice. Therefore, we can hardly do it. So stop using the word I. Iness leads to ego. And ahamta means, ahamta means minus. You know, my house, my land, my wife, my kids, my car, my money, my murti, my mandir, my, my, my. I and my, 
always leads to sorrow. It's ours. When you are a family person, it's not mine. Or I did this, we did it together. Every sacrifice I make in my home, my children, my wife has made a sacrifice also. Every sacrifice my Dullahin makes, I and my kids make a sacrifice with her also. So we did it together. It's not about I or my, my friends. When the children do good in their exams, they didn't do it alone. While they are making a sacrifice, we did it together. That's why, you know, when our kids were growing up and we spent time with them and studying and homework and extracurricular activities and stuff, all these were molding the mind of these youngsters and our youths. So we did it together. What we have become. You think I became who I am by myself? You think I did this and I did it by myself? My father's and mother's blessing. Their blessing did it for me. My, my guru, Sri Swami Anubhavananda Ji Maharaj, my beloved Sri Gurudev Chinmayanand Ji Maharaj, they did it for us. We do, my friends, what we can do, but their blessing help us through to achieve what we achieve. And so, this is what you call equal vision means see everyone as equal. None is better than none. Oh Baba, you never work where I work in. You never come in my office. And see how people as treat people. I know one person told me one day, he said, Baba, my life has become one of the most miserable life because I got a promotion at work. She got a promotion. And because she got a promotion, everybody in the office vexed with her. Imagine before they congratulate her and, and bless her and say, you know what? You did well. You work hard for it. You deserve it. They stop talking to her. My friends, that's because of I and mine. How come I didn't get it? How come she got it? How come I didn't get the promotion? How come she got it? How come they got it? How come I didn't get it? You see, my friends, this I and my is the cause of many people's sorrow. So therefore, tonight, offer your ego to Bhagwan Shiva. Offer your little eye. It has two eyes, a small eye and a big eye. This small eye is the individual eye. And the big eye is the universal eye. The universal eye has equal vision. The individual eye has a selfish vision. So, the point that we make is that when we lift ourselves with this equal vision, Bhagwan says here, that is an offering to Mahadev. That is an offering to Bhagwan Shiva. And so, Daksh Prajapati, who was the father-in-law of Bhagwan Shiva, he had, he could not have this equal vision. You know why? I want to ask you all something. Anybody, just tell me one reason why Daksh Prajapati, who was the father-in-law of Bhagwan Shiva, could not have this equal vision for Lord Shiva. Anybody can tell me why? Simple. Because his ego became too strong when the crown was placed on his head and he became the head of the Prajapatis. Once that crown place was placed on his head, you want to see people change? Anybody want to see people change? Give them some power. And you will see how your friend, the Dwitan, that man changed real plenty boy. Me and he was like that in a ring and finger. But how come he changed so much? That fellow got some power. And when people get power and people get wealth that empowers them and people get position that empowers them, they feel as though they can walk on everybody else. Friends, if you are being trampled on, if you are being walked on, if people are taking advantage of you, Om Namah Shivai. Don't take it on. Give them to Lord Shiva and you just continue doing the best that you can do and best of what you do and nobody in this world can derail you or take you down because anybody acts on ego cannot succeed. 
I'm going to repeat that. Anybody who functions on ego cannot succeed. They may show authority, they may show power, they may show position, they may show that they are strong, but the ego does not last. Ravan was killed, Daksh Prajapati was killed, all because of ego. And so, when we are humble and we, you know, we humble ourselves and we have an equal vision and we do what we have to do with the best of our ability, to the best of our ability, then, my friends, you know what happens? Jai, Jai Shiva Shankar, Jai Shiva Shankar, Jai Shankar Moli, Sabde Ho Me Deva Nirali, Jai Bam Bam Bo.
vision means where a family we treat our family as equal this is an offering to Bhagwan Shiva and when we are able to adopt this type of life and this type of lifestyle according to our scriptures according to our Shastras my friends then we'll experience the joy of living we'll experience the joy the joy of being alive so equal vision meaning that see everyone equally. Whatever position, how will somebody progress in life, don't allow yourself to be affected in a negative way by jealousy and these type of things. I'm going to tell you something. This might be very shocking, you know. You know what somebody told me one day? Somebody told me one day, she said, Baba, do you know my husband is jealous of me? I said, well, why are you talking to other people? He must be jealous. She said, no, Baba, I got a pay increase and he jealous. You could be jealous for that? You're supposed to be happy for that. So how the poison comes in, you know, how the negative comes in? Friends, so equal vision means have a balanced mind. Nothing happens without God's grace. I believe in, I cannot express, I don't have words to tell you how much I believe everything happens by the grace of Bhagwan. Every single thing happens by His will. Let every, let our every moment be His will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so, everything happens by His grace. So therefore, if everything is happening by His grace, why should I contaminate myself by not having an equal vision? Equal vision also in technical terms can be called as Divya Drishti. Divya Drishti means divine vision. And having developed that divine vision, my friends, we rise, you would not imagine how high we'll rise and reach in life.
when we perform shivratri vrat and when we perform shivratri fasting so equal vision peace peace p e a c e is the real flowers that you offer to bhagwan in puja any time you have a flower in your hand the only thing you could think about is love true false any time you have a flower in your hand valentine day was rose like that after valentine day it blows like that <laughs> rose and then blows <laughs> <laughs> no, we it sounds funny, you know, but do you know it really happens? Sad to see. So friends, in this way, when we worship Bhagwan in this way, we lift the puja from the lingam and from the bedi into our practical life and we internalize it, then everything becomes an offering. Now, very interesting and very beautiful also it is said here. Om Namah Shivaya How did that tone sound? Okay, I'll say it, I'll say it again, right? Om Namah Shivaya How did that one sound? And tell me how this one sounds. Om Namah Shivaya Different? Okay, tell me how this one sound. Shuklam Badaram Vishnu Shashi Varanam Chaturbujam Prasanna Varanam Dai Sarvavigno Pashanti. Right? Mantra. Tell me how this one sound. Shuklam Badaram Vishnu Shashi Varanam Chaturbujam Prasanna Varanam Dai Sarvavigno Pashanti. Same mantra. Different sound. Tell me about this one. Trayam bakam yajamahe sugandim pushti vardanam urdwa. Same mantra now. Listen to it. Om Triyambakam Yajamahi Sukandim Pushti Vardhanam Urdwaru Kamiva Bandhana Vrityor Mokshi Yamamrata Om Triyambakam Yajamahi Sukandim Pushti Vardhanam Urdwaru Kamiva Bandhana Pratyor Mokshi Amamratat How did that one sound? You see, same mantra, but they sound different. That different in the sound is called Nada. Nada. Nada means sound. So, the sound means what? The sound is Abhishek or Abhishekam being offered to Bhagwan Shiva. So the sound of the mantra permeates the atmosphere. The sound of the mantra permeates, vibrates in every atom around us and that falls on the Shiva Lingam. 
as a bishik. Can you think about that? So when somebody tell you chant, you're chanting. And if I lift your voice now, like when you're quarreling, so it is quarrel? Yeah, I quarrel just like that. <laughs> Baba, when I quarrel, nobody to hear me, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> the sound, let the sound echo. The only time you must chant soft so nobody hear when you're doing job. Bhajan, chant, let everybody hear. Um, mantras, chant, let everybody hear. But you see, when you're doing your personal job, chant in such a way only you hear. Nobody else. And especially your Guru Mantra. Chant your Guru Mantra in such a way where you alone are hearing yourself chanting. And your mala turning. One by one. So the sound, according to the Rudra Upanishad, is Abhishekam to Bhagwan Shiva. It's the offering of the bathing of the Murti of Bhagwan Shiva. So at this point in time, we are going to chant some Vedic mantras while some of the devotees will come and you have your offerings that you are going to offer. Take your time and you offer your milk and your ghee and your dahi and your honey and your flowers and your bay leaves. And we have two young pandits there. They will guide you to offer your chandan and your perfume and your different offerings, arti. And if you get a chance to walk around the Shiva Lingam, you can do that also. So you devotees can come here while these mantras are being chanted now. Aham Amrathe, Amritam Brahmani, Aapho Mere Dashishrita, Kleto Hrudaye, Hrudayam Mahi, Aham Amrathe, Amritam Brahmani, Prithvivi Sharini Shita, Sharira Gam Hrudaye, Hrudayam Mahi, Aham Amrathe, Amritam Brahmani, Oshadi Varas Patayo Melo Masushita, Lomani Hridaye, Hridayam Mahi, Aham Amrathe, Amritam Brahmani, Inlomi Vade, Shritaha, Balagam Hridaye, Hridayam Mahi, Aham Amrathe, Amritam Brahmani, Vajjanyome Murde Shritaha, Murdya Hridaye, Hridayam Mahi, Aham Amrathe, Amritam Brahmani, Ishanome Manyao Shritaha, Manyur Hridaye, Hridayam Mahi, Aham Amrathe, Amritam Brahmani, Atma Mahatma Shvishtat, Atma Hridaye, Hridayam Mahi, Aham Amrathe, Amritam Brahmani, Unarma Atma Punarayuragat, Unaprana Punarakutamagat, Vaishwana Rurashmi Virvirvanaha, Amtastishthatvamutasya gopaha Om Shanti 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 Jai Sita Ram and Namaste everyone. Join me every Thursday evening at 6.05 p.m. where we sit together like a Hindu family and we do Hawan and we listen to bhajan and a short discourse from Dr. Suraj Ratan Ramachan. Join me every Thursday evening at 6.05. Jai Sitaram. Jai Sitaram and Namaste everyone. Welcome to our Thursday evening hawan. As we get prepared, these are the materials we need to do our hawan. We have option one and option two. Option one involves no smoke. You will need a hawan kun, a cotton soaked with ghee inside of your hawan kun, a bowl with ghee, a spoon, a loto with water, a small fruit, maybe a prune or a raisin, extra cotton, four flowers and matches. And that is for option one with no smoke. With option two, which will be a, a big flame, 
You will need approximately four flowers, a loter with water and spoon, a bowl with ghee and spoon, our 